Okay, cool. All right. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Is there anything else you wanted to share? No, I was just going to say, I'm so glad you um, told the world out there to try out Gulab Jamun. I feel like it's it's a must. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> if there is one thing you take away from this podcast, it should be that you must try a Gulab Jamun at least once in your life. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Urdu Sikhi. I'm your host, Shireen, and today's topic is, can I help you? Today, we'll learn how you can offer someone help using the informal tone. Today, I have with me Nadia from the UK. She's interested in focusing on phrases that are used when inviting others to your home. We did cover the really formal way of how you might extend an invitation to someone with Alama Iqbal's nazm, ek makra or maki. So be sure to check that out. But today, we'll talk to you about what you might say after you've already been invited to someone's home. Maybe you want to offer to help them with something. And as always, we'll look at tons of examples of how to use the same sentence structure to say different things. So with that, let's meet Nadia. Assalamu alaikum, Nadia. Welcome to Urdu Sikhye. Wa alaikum salam. Thanks for having me today. Thank you. Before we begin our dialogue, I'd love for you to share with everyone a little bit about yourself and what brought you to Urdu Sikhye. Sure. I graduated last summer with a degree in foreign literature and languages. Right now, I'm working in marketing before I start my graduate studies. So what brought me here? Well, given my academic background, I basically thought it was about time I finally worked on my Urdu, what I call my grandmother tongue, since my parents also grew up here speaking English. I'd love to be able to express myself more freely in Urdu and be able to read Urdu literature one day. I'm right there with you. Yeah, being able to read Urdu literature is definitely a goal of mine too. Are you able to read or the Urdu script at all? Nice. So uh, do you mind if I ask, uh, what, what is it that you're going to study in graduate studies? Politics. Oh, that's different. <laughs> well, I guess, well, culture, politics. Because eh. uh, so in my undergrad, I spent a year in Jordan. So I was exposed to a lot of like Middle Eastern politics yes. um, and like the refugee crisis as well. I see. Uh, so I think that's the linkage. Um, okay. And like travels and stuff. And are you studying Arabic as well? So I studied Arabic for my undergrad. I did oh, I see. So then you speak those? Yes. Nice. That's <laughs> kind of so awesome. awesome. <laughs> well, I don't speak Urdu that well, so <laughs> I need to catch up. <laughs> but yeah, no, it makes sense that you would um, be able to read Urdu because I feel like that's how I got my start too. I took uh, mm -hmm. Arabic in college and the script is similar, you know, mm -hmm. and so the sounds yeah. really helped me. Cool, yeah. cool. Okay, so let's begin. Just a reminder, first you'll hear the dialogue at a conversational pace, two times. Then you'll hear it slowed down with the translation in English. And then we'll go into great detail about what everything means and other ways of saying the same thing. So here we go. Nadia, khana bohat mazedar tha. Shukriya. Kya main mez saaf karne mein tumhari madad kar sakti hoon? Shireen, iski koi zarurat nahi. Tum aram se baito. Magar main tumhari madad karna chaati hoon. Achcha. Agar tum itna hi israr kar rahi ho, to tum sabko mithai de sakti ho. Ye hoi na baat. Nadia, khana bohat mazedar tha. Shukriya. Kya main mez saaf karne mein tumhari madad kar sakti hoon? Shireen, iski koi zarurat nahi tum aram se baito magar main tumhari madad karna chahti hu acha agar tum itna hi israr kar rahi ho to tum sabko mithai de sakti ho ye hui na baat all right so now we're going to go ahead and go over it one more time with the translation nadia khana bahut mazedar tha nadia the food was delicious shukriya Thank you. Kya main mez saaf karne mein tumhari madad 
कर सकती हूँ कैन आई हेल्प यू क्लियर द टेबल शिरीन इसकी कोई जरूरत नहीं तुम आराम से बैठो शरीन दिस इज नॉट नेसेसरी प्लीज सेट एंड रिलैक्स मगर मैं तुम्हारी मदद करना चाहती हूं बट आई वांट टू हेल्प यू अच्छा अगर तुम इतना ही इसरार कर रही हो तो तुम सबको मिठाई दे सकती हो वेल सिंस यू इंसिस्ट यू कैन गिव स्वीट्स टू एवरीवन pass out the dessert ye hui na baat that's more like it let's take a look at the first line nadia khana bahut mazedar tha if you've been following along with all the previous episodes then all these words will be familiar to you this just means the food was delicious and this is in the past tense So we see the past tense of the to be verb hona which in this case is ta. Yes, be sure to download the free handout from the website to get more example sentences for ta. So the next line is shukriya, a very good word to know in any language. It means thank you. Shukriya. But wouldn't you agree Shireen Westerners say thank you way too much. I don't think if two South Asians were having this conversation, they'd ever say thank you. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I remember one of my Urdu teachers also saying that the American culture uses thank you excessively. It's that way here too. We say sorry too much as well. <laughs> also, please is more frequently used in English than in Urdu. Both of these expressions don't really have a simple direct translation in Urdu. I've heard that merbani se or uh, merbani karke are the equivalents to please, but I've literally never heard anyone say it. I think instead of please, the politeness is more often captured in the grammatical form used. For example, liji or kiji. Definitely, you're spot on. and we did cover this in episode 19 episode 19 has a five page handout so be sure to also take a look at that for examples of expressing things politely so instead of thank you i might say something like oh i have been making this dish for years to say i have been making this for years in urdu i'd say ye to main saalon se paka rahi hu Salon means years. Salon se means four years. Let's take a look at that sentence structure. We have salon se plus the verb, then rahi or raha ho. So how would you say, I have been taking photos for years? Okay, so if you heard the first part of the nazm ek makra or makhi, you might remember we discussed the words kitch and kinch. Kinchna or kinchna means to pull, but paired with tasvir, it means to take a photo. Tasvir kinchna. Tasvir kinchna, to take a photo. So to say for years I've been taking photos. or as google translate puts it for years i've been photographing that would be main saalon se tasveere khinch rahi hu main saalon se tasveere khinch rahi hu there is a set line or a set phrase that we can say to better indicate that we've been doing this for years that we've been doing anything for years it better expresses this idea that Oh, this is no big deal. I've been doing it for ages. It's a way to say this is not impressive. So when I said Nadia, khana bahut mazedar tha, she could respond, "Oh, ye to main saalon se banati hui aa rahi hu." Ye to main saalon se banati hui aa rahi hu. Ye to main saalon se banati hui aa rahi hu. If you remember, Ana means to come, but you can just ignore that fact here. Just remember, it is a set phrase. So we'll have salon se plus the verb, 
with the ta or ti ending, depending on the gender, and the a rahi hun or a raha hun. Okay, moving on to the next line. Shireen answered, Kya main mez saaf karne mein tamari madad kar sakti hun? You know that we're friends, or at least have some level of comfort with one another, because Shireen used the informal your, tomari. If we didn't know each other very well, or there was a big age difference, then she'd have chosen to use a. So instead of tomari, she'd have said apki. Kya here is functioning as a question indicator. So this lets us know that is definitely a question and not a statement. Other words that haven't been covered before include mez. Mez means table. Tumari madad kar sakti ho means I can help you. And if you add kya in the front, then it's can I help you? And if you're being formal, which might be safest, where those you don't know well or you're meeting for the first time, what would you say? Aap ki madad kar sakti ho? Aap ki madad kar sakti ho? Kya main aap ki madad kar sakti ho? Kya main aap ki madad kar sakti ho? Great. Okay, so going back to the question in our dialogue, Kya main mez saaf karne mein tumhari madad kar sakti ho? The question structure is Kya main plus the noun plus the verb, plus ne, and me. Then the rest of that question. Tumhari madad kar sakti hu? So using this structure, and remember, it'll be easier if you listen to this episode while looking at the free handout. So be sure to download it from the website or from the link in the description. So using this structure, how would you ask the following? Can I help you pick up the papers? Can I help you make the calls? Can I help you eat the cake? You might even phrase the questions as, can I help you in picking up the papers? Can I help you in making the calls? Can I help you with eating the cake? So let's do the first one together. And the two others, you'll have to check the PDF handout. Can I help you pick up the papers? First, we have kya plus the noun. In this case, it's papers. So paper in Urdu is kagas. One paper is kagas and papers in the plural is kagzat. So our noun would be kagzat. Kya me kagzat? To pick up is otana. So if you go back to our original question, the noun and verb were mez saaf karne, table cleaner. Here we have paper pick up. So it will be kya me kagzad or ta. It won't be the infinitive form of the verb otana. It will just be the root. It will just be ota. So kya me kagzad or ta. Then add the ne plus me. Then the remainder the mari madad kar sakti ho. Kya main kagzat uthane mein tumhari madad kar sakti hu? Kya main kagzat uthane mein tumhari madad kar sakti hu? So using the same structure, how would you say the other two questions? Can I help you in making the calls? Can I help you with eating the cake? Yes, that last one is especially useful. <laughs> I'm always ready to help someone eat cake. <laughs> <laughs> me too, Shereen, me too. <laughs> um, and next, I respond with, Shireen, iski koi zarurat nahi. Tum aram se beto. The word zarurat means necessity. Iski means of this. Koi means any. So, iski koi zarurat nahi literally means there is not any need for this. 
or this isn't necessary. Then I say, tum aram se beto. This literally means sit with comfort or sit comfortably. Remember, we're using the informal you here. So if I used the formal you, up, how would the rest of the sentence change? Good question. Then the sentence would be, aap aram se baithe, or aap aram se baithe. So let's move to the next line. In it, I say, magar main tumhari madad karna chahti hoon. Magar main tumhari madad karna chahti hoon. Magar is the exact same as lekin, but. I'm trying to think whether they're always interchangeable, and I want to say no. You could always use lekin in place of magar, but you can't use magar in place of lekin. Not because it would be wrong. I don't think it would ever be wrong, but it just doesn't sound natural. Now it's got me wondering why I used magar instead of lekin. Maybe because I was kind of going against what Nadia is suggesting. Magar is better. So if a mom tells her daughter to go to her room and the daughter is being defiant, she'd be like, but you said I could go outside. For that but, you'd use magar. But again, if you used lekin, it wouldn't be wrong at all. So I guess that was not helpful whatsoever. <laughs> so magar means but. That's all you need to know. Okay, let's return to our sentence. Magar mein tumhari madad karna chahti hoon. The verb jahana means to like or to want. Jahana would be conjugated to jahati if a woman is saying, I want. And jahata if a man is saying, I want. Me jahati hu or me jahata hu. And me kya chahati hu? And what do I want? Me tumhari madad karna chahati hu. I want to help you. Madad means help. So, madad karna means to help. Main tumhari madad karna chahti hoon. I want to help you. What if I wanted to say, I want to be your friend? That would be, main tumhari dost banna chahti hoon. Main tumhari dost banna chahti hoon. Banna means to become. For example, if a child says, I want to become a teacher when I am older. He or she would say, Main badi ho ke teacher banna chahti ho. Main badi ho ke teacher banna chahti ho. That's what a girl would say. How would this sentence change if a boy were saying it? Main bada ho ke teacher banna chahta ho. Main bada ho ke teacher banna chahta ho. So both bada and chahta would change to match the gender of the person speaking it. Remember, bada and buddy mean big or older in this case. In Urdu, they also use teacher to refer to a teacher. But one of the Urdu words for teacher is ustad for a male teacher and ustani for a female teacher. So we could also say, main badi ho ke ustani banna chahti ho. Main badi ho ke ustani banna chahti ho. Or, main bada ho ke ustad banna chahta ho. Main bada ho ke ustad banna chahta ho. Exactly. Very well explained. So returning to our dialogue, to magar main tumhari madad karna chahti hoon, Nadia responds, Acha, agar tum itna hi israr kar rahi ho, to tum sabko mithai de sakti ho. Acha, agar tum itna hi israr kar rahi ho, to tum sabko mithai baat. Okay, I wanted to talk about baatna as well. Yeah, I saw that in the, I saw that in the comments, the baatna. Um, do you know what it means? No, I've never heard it before. So, yeah, so this idea that I keep, you know, instead of saying dena, I keep wanting to say batna because that's what I've commonly heard, like mitai batna, like to share mitai, to, to, if you bought something, literally batna means to share, but, um, like give out. 
Or exactly. Yeah. Exactly. To pass out the exactly. That's exactly it. Batna means to with mitai. It means to pass out the mitai. Yeah. So we could say mitai de sakti ho, ya mitai baat sakti ho, and that would be the same exact meaning. Mm. Excellent. All right. So let's look at israr. Israr karna means to insist. Itna he goes together. So itna by itself means. I believe it means much. So let's look at a few examples of where itna and itna he might be used. Our first sentence is me itna sara kana nahi kha sakti. Me itna sara kana nahi kha sakti. This means I can't eat this much food. Right. You often see the word itna paired with itna sara or itna kam. Itna sara means so much or this much, and itna kam means so little, this little. Then we have me itna hi ka sakti ho. Me itna hi ka sakti ho. This means I can eat just this much, or I can eat only this much. Moving on, mene itna intazar kia. Mene itna intazar kia. I waited so much. If you remember the episode I did with Alessia from Italy, episode 16, in that dialogue, we had the line, Tum itni der thi kaha. Tum itni der thi kaha. This literally means, where were you for so long? So you notice how it can either be itni or itna. And I believe that depends on the gender of the verb. If the verb is feminine, like p, past tense of the to be verb hona, then we use itni. And when the verb is masculine, like kana or intizar karna, then we have itna. If you feel I've left out something crucial from the explanation, let me know. Okay, so one last example. I wanted to include this because I really like this word, and it's one we haven't covered before. The sentence is, Mene itna bardasht kia. Mene itna bardasht kia. This means I tolerated so much or I endured so much. Isn't bardasht such a cool word? <laughs> I think I always hear this word in such dramatic dialogues. Uh, so for me, it's sort of a heavy word. And of course, it means endurance or tolerance. Bardasht karna means to tolerate or to endure. Okay, so let's return to my response. Acha. Agar tum itna hi asrar kar rahi ho, to tum sab ko mithai de sakti ho. Let's look at kar rahi ho. This is the present continuous tense. When someone is kar rahe ho or kar rahi ho, they are doing the act right now. So, acha, agar tum itna hi asrar kar rahi ho, means, okay, if you are insisting so much, that ing in insisting comes from rahiho. And ago means if. That might be new. As we know, this is the informal tone. Shireen, how would you say this sentence using the formal tone? Good question. I would encourage anyone listening to pause here and think of the answer yourself. Okay, so to say the sentence in the formal tone with the respectful aap, we'd say, Acha, agar aap itna hi israr kar rahi hain, and the rest of that sentence would be, To aap sabko mithai de sakti hain. So all the thumbs become aaps and all the hoes become ha. Acha, agar aap itna hi israr kar rahi hain, to aap sabko mithai de sakti hain. Actually, so before moving on, um, Nadia, do you remember how to say, so right now we're saying if you insist so much, um, you can give the mitai. But how would I say you can pass out the mitai? Do you remember? Aap sabko mitai baat sakti? Baat sakti? Yeah. Exactly. Can you say that one more time? Yeah. 
आप सबको मिठाई बांट सकती हैं परफेक्ट एग्जैक्टली लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द रेस्ट ऑफ दैट सेंटेंस तो तुम सबको मिठाई दे सकती हो द सेंटेंस इज सेइंग इफ यू इंसिस्ट सो मच यू कैन गिव द डेजर्ट टू एवरीवन सबको मींस एवरीवन mithai is a unique word i was telling shireen earlier how it can't simply be translated to dessert because mithai is referring to a specific type of south asian dessert if you've ever heard of gulab jamuns or jalebis those specifically are mithais yeah i completely agree with you but then if in urdu you wanted to refer to cakes pies and cookies what would you call them i do understand I couldn't call them mithai because like you said very specific items fall under mithai and I'll be sure to post photos of some mithais on the page for episode 24 so you should check those out more importantly though find out where there is an indian or pakistani restaurant near you and get yourself a gulab jamun you can thank me later so i know for sure the word mithai is connected to the word meetha which means sweet cakes pies and cookies are meethi cheese meethi cheese which means sweet things right so if you're having a get together and you only have savory dishes i might say something like kuch meetha bhi hona chahiye kuch meetha bhi hona chahiye and that means there should also be something sweet and that mita depending on the type of party it is whether it's american or turkish or pakistani it would automatically refer to the desserts of that culture would you agree with that shireen 100% okay so let's look at the verb ve the infinitive form is dena dena means to give On the handout you'll find all the conjugations of dinner so download that from the website Tum sab ko mithai de sakti ho If you remember sakna means can or to be able to So tum sab ko mithai de sakti ho means you can give everyone mithai And again by mithai we are referring to specific South Asian desserts like gulab jamun and chumchams And now for our final line. It's an idiomatic line. Ye hui na baat. Ye hui na baat. I won't tell you literally what it means because there's no sense in it, but idiomatically, you'd say this when you're happy with the results. So the closest English equivalent that I could think of was that's the attitude or that's more like it. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as we did making it. सुनने का शुक्रिया अंतिल नेक्स्ट टाइम खुदाफिज